Literature down the ages has explored all aspects of human life. Shakespeare famously wrote about the seven ages of man. And in this final week, we're looking at the final ages of a human life, looking at questions of ageing and in particular of the mind becoming frail in times of age. Dementia, Alzheimer's, conditions that affect so many people now and as with so many people living longer, it's a huge problem for society. And we want to explore whether people living with loved ones suffering from dementia might be helped in some ways by seeing how a great writer like Shakespeare deals with the painful aspect of old age. And there's no one better to talk to about this than Sir Ian McKellen. Sir Ian McKellen, one of the greatest Shakespearean actors of modern times, has played all the, all the major parts. And a few years ago, he embarked on the role of King Lear. In many ways, perhaps the most demanding of all Shakespeare's tragic parts. I remember speaking to another actor, Oliver Ford Davis, also a very good Lear, and he said the problem with King Lear is that by the time you're old enough to play it, you're too old to play it. It's a huge endurance test, and yet you have to have a kind of inwardness with the experience of old age. Ian, thanks so much for talking to us today about King Lear. Um, it was quite a quite a struggle to get inside that role, wasn't it? I'll give you a, a little uh, a little secret. I saw your Lear in preview, even before the press night, and then I saw it again near the end of the run, many, many months later, and I don't think I've ever seen a performance that has changed and grown so much and become so much more profound and complete than I did there. And mm. it's really that, I don't know if you've, you felt that yourself. yourself. Well, as performances go by, and I suppose I did about 150 of Lear uh, over a year in a variety of different theatres across the world, actually. Um, you can't really judge um, day by day how, how things are changing, but of course it is, it is the great joy of, of theatre that, that you're not stuck. Uh, you can advance in a film a decision has been made by the editor and the director and that is the performance but uh, eventually we did film King Lear actually and and what you get in that is is the is the experience of um, uh, a year's working on it so I'm not surprised that uh, you were more taken with the, the later than the earlier version going to, back to what you were saying about Oliver Ford Davis uh, I think the first thing that struck me about Lear was his strength, his physical strength. In Shakespeare's day, a man of over 80 would be an unusual person. So uh, he is still alive, um, but right at the top of the play, although we know very little about him, about his past uh, life, or even, even what sort of king uh, he, he has been, he has come to a decision that he's going to stop being king. He's going to keep the name and all the additions to a king, is that the phrase? Uh, but he's going to hand over the power to his uh, sons-in-law. Uh, and then uh, the story starts. So he, has, he is at a point, I think, where he's aware that his, to, his strength is going. Even though in the first scene he seems to offer to, to hit uh, one of his oldest and most loyal uh, allies, uh, Kent, and later definitely does hit Oswald. Um, and um, in the story surviving uh, everything that he's, all the indignities he's put through, being thrown out by two daughters who seem to want to kill him, destroy him, he still survives. Uh, and. I think it's rather that willpower that he's got against increasing frailness uh, that is the mark of uh, his madness. Uh, mad is a word that rings through the play, isn't it? Uh, and I think perhaps has a different sort of emphasis uh, depending on the where it's actually used. But um, I don't look at 
on Lear's madness uh, as being a frailty, rather a, a, it's a sign of his, his strength. It's almost, it's a, it's a way of sort of fighting back. Yes, and I don't it? therefore connect it with um, what I know of, of, of dementia, uh, which um, he's pretty well almost always in control, or trying to be in control. Uh, and 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 if he if he if he's lost in a world of his own making, uh, uh, when he meets up with uh, Gloucester, another disadvantaged old man, uh, and I think the stage direction, whether it's Shakespeare's or not, uh, Lear enters mad. Uh, we may not quite be able to totally get into that world, but he's in a world of of, of his own making, and and therefore. I never really think he's a, a victim of, of some uh, mental um, disability. But he, he does, ha I mean, Shakespeare, I'm sure, the great observer of, mm. of, of, of human life, w would have observed the behaviour of old men and old women. And th there are, for instance, moments where his memory is going. I'm, I'm always particularly struck by that moment when he's he's angry and he's raging about what is he going to do about his evil daughter. I will do such things, what they are I know not, but they shall be the terrors of the earth. He can't actually remember what he's going to do. Mm. Or imagine what he or might imagine. do. It all goes wrong right at the outset when this man who seems to have been totally in control of the nation, the court, his family, decides to change all that and, and um, retire, I suppose would be a good word. Not abdicate, retire. Let the work be done by others. Perhaps he's looking forward simply to, to, to retirement, as many old people do. Oh, at last I can do what I want to do, mm. rather than all be relieved of all the responsibilities. Always bolstered by his um, connection with the gods. I mean, he, it's probably a theocracy he's been running. Uh, and that's why in our production we began with a, with a silent show of um, everybody in the plane kneeling to him and almost worshipping uh, the power that he got. He gives away that power. Nobody really comments on, it, on that. What they're concerned about is, is that he rejects his loving daughter, Cordelia, who's, who's dead, perhaps with a, a family uh, tray of obstinacy that she's learned from her father to speak the truth and stands up to him. That is what appalls everybody, his reaction to that, his throwing her out, then, then discarding Kent, his, his ally, almost immediately. That's what everybody thinks to be extraordinary. Although his daughter's left alone, uh, the elder daughters, Goneril and Regan, um, say, but he's always been a bit like this. Yeah, he, he ha hath ever but slenderly known himself. So is it a sort of continuation of a form of behaviour that's been hi always his characteristic, or well, is it something I, that comes with old age? I sense that they perhaps don't know their father very well, and why would they? He's, he, they've been very much his subjects, it seems. They've been very much um, brought up to um, obey orders and do what he wants. And, and if, if, if he's an all-powerful king, uh, that's the situation. Uh, but all his, all the journey that he goes on uh, towards a self-awareness, towards, I think, I felt strongly, a, a rejection of, of the gods who turn out to be absolutely no use in the dilemma in which he finds himself, uh, this all becomes, comes from his decision to stop being the sort of king he has been. Uh, and I think we can all relate to that, that uh, if you stop doing the job which has been all absorbing, what are you going to do? Uh, and if you've been all powerful, if you've been a god on earth, uh, and suddenly just a man, you're suddenly just a father, you're, you're suddenly got time to play, uh, that's not the life he's used to, he's not, it, it, so it's a, it's a self-imposed um, change uh, which he's not, absolutely not prepared for, but it's a change that releases in all the other characters, sometimes a madness of their own. Uh, surely it's mad to blind somebody, isn't it? 
and particularly on a stage in front of us, mm. a lot of strangers. I mean, mm. it's the worst thing you could almost do, almost worse than actually killing the man. Mm. Mm. Or woman. Fascinating? Uh, and, and, yeah. and so everybody's released. Um, um, Cordelia becomes herself and becomes estranged mm. uh, from her father. Uh, Kent the same. Um, it, it, Leah's dilemma even seems to get inside someone who's making a parallel journey towards uh, self-awareness, the, the young man, uh, Edgar, who takes off all his clothes and says, I'm going to start afresh by being somebody else, by pretending to be mad. Uh, I feel that couldn't really have happened unless the whole nation hadn't been put into turmoil mm. by the king's wrong decision, stupid decision, foolish decision, mad decision to think that you can give away everything and yet retain it. Mm. Uh, and so it, it begins with um, not a mental uh, disability, but a bad decision. Mm. But it's interesting that, yeah, you're, you're saying it, it, it's a play about retirement. And yes. I guess the, the, the problem is, that as, as you say, for him, uh, he he's not prepared himself for it, and he no longer is he able just to give commands and do what he wants. And for for his for his children, of course, they then have the problem. He says, "Right, um, I'm going to come and live in your home." Um, oh, by the way, I'll, I'll bring a hundred uh, hundred knights with me. And that that's, that sort of sense that uh, retirement is one of the most difficult moments uh, in the life, not only of an individual. Uh, but also in the life of a, of a family. Yeah. Um, and in that sense, one, one does have a degree of sympathy for Goneril and Regan, although they do terrible things. It's not easy to have a difficult old man coming, living, living in your house. And there's been nothing uh, we can detect uh, to prepare them for this situation. He's not been a good father to that extent. If he's going to hand everything over to his sons-in-law and, and, and his daughters, the, the, their wives, um, there should have been some preparation for it, but it, it, it's, all, it's all, as he seems to have behaved all his life, willful. What I say is right, and, and, and don't contradict it because I have the gods on my side. That's an unfair advantage, isn't it? Uh, I think what, one of the other key aspects of his ageing is his, how quick he is to be angry. He has a quick temper, and I, I sense that a lot of um, what his anger is about is the sort of frustration that as you get older, even day-to-day -day tasks become more difficult. When, you know, when he's, he's trying to do up buttons and put on boots and so on. And, uh, yes. uh, was that something you sort of played with when you were... Um, well, it's, um, you refer to one of his last lines, pray, sir, undo this button. What other playwright could could have sort of summed everything up with that? I I can't breathe. I could I need this button. Played perhaps in a theatre a bit smaller than we've always imagined at, at Elizabethan playhouses. Um, a theatre where everybody in the audience could have seen that button, which becomes for Lear at that moment the most important thing in his life, a button. Well. That's our human experience, isn't it? Um, the stumble on the stairs, which mm. ends up with a broken leg and a, a mm. long term in hospital and permanent mm. disability, perhaps. Mm. Just that small, uh, everyday thing. I, it, w one of the problems of playing King Lear and, and, and other Shakespearean uh, leading roles is that the backstory, the history, um, uh, is not revealed to the audience. He's 80 years old. He's got a daughter, Cordelia, his youngest, who must be what, early 20s? She's getting married. Mm. For the Elizabethans, that would be rather late, wouldn't it? She might even be younger than that. So he became a father when he was in his early 60s. Uh, was Cordelia the daughter of the same mother as Goneril and Regan? I mm. thought not. Mm. I thought perhaps he'd had two wives, and that's why I wore two wedding rings. Nobody noticed but me. Uh, it would explain the difference in temperament between mm. the th mm. Cordelia and her, her sisters, um, and would explain perhaps why she was absolutely his favourite, because at, at, at the point at which she now is at the outset of the play, 
she would look rather like perhaps uh, her mother had looked uh, when Lear fell in love with her. Perhaps he fell in love with her. But we don't know. Uh, and uh, suddenly it's all happening. And it happens with an enormous speed. The, the decline, the, uh, the release of all the violence in, in other characters as well as in King Lear. And I suppose Shakespeare's there playing with what is kingship and, and uh, what responsibility does a, a leader have and so on. But, but he retains his physical strength. Yes, mm. he may find it difficult at times to putting on his boots. And of course, he, all his life, somebody else has put his boots on for him, you know. He's not an ordinary man. But one of the last things he does, it appears, uh, there are alternatives, but the, the traditional way of playing it is that the old man of over 80, having been through all the physical degradation of, of, of being out of doors for the first time in his life, cold and, and, and miserable and unhoused, uh, actually carries the corpse of, of his daughter. That's a remarkable physical feat. So he, you do feel all the time right to the very end that, that, that he's, 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 um, he's bull-like, he's, he's, he's um, potentially a, a aggressive. And I think they, what appealed to me most about playing the part, and perhaps is germane to, to what you're questioning, is that he discovers his weaknesses and then sort of embraces them uh, and recognizes that uh, love is more important than power. Mm. He becomes gentle. He yes. The, for, for me, my absolute favorite scene in the play is when, when he awakens yes. after that, that sleep. And he, there, I, 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 don't, I don't like using the word madness, but he, 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 there's a sort of otherworldliness, isn't there? That he, he, he almost thinks, am I still dreaming? Have I died and gone to heaven? Right. Are you a, an angel? I am bound on a wheel of fire. My own tears do scald like Now, that doesn't leg. seem to me to be a dementia. Mm. That, that seems to me him trying to understand his physical and his mental and his emotional state and, and what it is to be a father and indeed what it is to be a human being. But there is, in, there is still an, en an element of that, that memory loss that is, that is very characteristic of it. Do you remember, he says, I don't remember where I was last night. And that sort of sense, you can remember things from long ago, but you can't remember last night. But that's just the stage he's g going through. And uh, we've all been, you don't have to be very, very old to, to have that experience. What have I come into this room to do? Um, you know, mm. that sort of, mm. uh, that may be a sign of things to come, but uh, it, mm. it's a, it's, we're all familiar with that. It, it's that as he goes along, as an observer, you might say, this man is uh, so intemperate, so foolish, so, so willful, that we can only put a label on it, and he's mad. And although Lear says, I don't want to be mad, don't let me be mad, I think I'm mad, I, 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 actually what he's trying to do is define himself and the stage he's at. So. For him, it isn't a madness. Uh, others might think it's so peculiar that we have to put a label on it, but for him, it's a learning process that he's going through. And uh, therefore, I don't really relate it to, to my notions of what dementia is, where, where you're, you're, lo you're losing it, you're losing it, you're losing it the whole time. I, I feel, on the contrary, there is gaining it, okay. gaining it, gaining it. But he does behave in some, some, some quite peculiar ways. I mean, it's a, it's a little strange for um, an old man, a former king, used to being robed, uh, to start taking his clothes off uh, in a storm in the middle of the night. Obviously, he's doing it because Edgar, poor Tom, has done it. But wh when, uh, what did you, when you were playing that, that segment of it? I mean, famously, you did take all your clothes off on the I stage, did. and quite right, too. Well, um, I, I, I wanted to do that because Edgar has done mm. that at the mm. beginning, and I think their stories are, are related, mm. that they're both... Mm trying to get back to uh, 
themselves as poor naked, what, what's the phrase? Poor, well, poor naked wretches, uh, an unaccommodated man, he uses that phrase. Yes, uh, and a poor, uh, a bare, poor bare forked, forked animal. Forked animal, yeah. Wow. In terms of the play on the stage, it, it's only about a, a, an hour and a half from having been ruling the world to seeing himself and others as being bare forked animals. Well, what a revelation that was for him. And for us, uh, and for the and king, if, if that's, if that's it's madness, it's yeah. a madness for which we should be grateful. It is, and well, I mean, I, well, I just can't get over with that scene. We know this play was performed in front of King James the day yeah. after Christmas Day, sixteen oh six, in the palace at Whitehall. For a king to be sitting the, the prime seat in the centre of the auditorium, watching a king do that—I mean, it's astonishing how Shakespeare got away with it. I just don't know. I, I suppose, but I say, oh, he's mad. Therefore, uh, don't relate it to anybody else. But uh, I, I, I know from talking to uh, friends and, and, and strangers who'd, who'd seen me play King Lear that uh, they often related it to their own experience with, with aged parents. And uh, my, my own stepmother w was uh, uh, stumbling towards 100 years old while I was doing King Lear. Uh, so, uh, old age, uh, being tired, wanting a little peace. I think that's how Lear starts out. He just wants to let it all go and have a bit of fun or just sleep or something. He's exhausted and then by this foolishness, not, not just of, of, of getting rid of his youngest daughter, but giving too much power to the... To the other two daughters. He then has to cope with all those reactions. So, when he's in the storm and he takes off his clothes and, and, and wants to be part of the elements, that wouldn't have happened if the daughters hadn't turned him out of doors. And for the first time he was having to cope uh, against the rain and the storm and the cold. And It would be an intolerable play to watch if Shakespeare hadn't given Lear his carers, those who love him. Why do they love him? There must be something about this man that is admirable. And, and it always, it, at his worst moments of distress and discomfort, and discombobulation, is that a word? At his side is a fool who serves him and loves him, wants to help. Uh, Kent, in disguise, always there with him. Uh, and eventually his youngest daughter, with all her love. Uh, so you think it's, there's, there's a sense in the place, it, it is going to be all right. If he were just on his own, I don't think we could watch it. And there's also... So, um, old people need mm. us, need their carers, yes. need their yes. family, and need love. And they also, they also need the kindness of strangers, don't they? The, uh, one of the wonderful things about the play is this parallel plot where you have Gloucester, also an old man, an old man who is rendered blind on stage. And the extraordinary thing with him is the way that he is helped by a servant, and then by poor Tom in disguise. But the, just and an old man. And an old man. It doesn't no, have a name. It doesn't have a name, that's right. But the, just, just that sense that uh, at, at, at the moment when he's being treated in the most appalling way, um, you know, the, the servant of the Duke of Cornwall stands up and uh, fights for Gloucester, and then other servants apply flax and whites of eggs yeah. to his to his wounded eyes, and uh, um, and the pe the people who are kind are not always the ones. In fact, often they're the ones who don't have power and wealth and status themselves. And I, I th think it's a mistake, therefore, to to think that King Lear isn't entirely pessimistic. And 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 on on, on the contrary, the the every little sign of of, of love and affection and and simple humanity. Uh, shines even brighter because mm. of its context. And at the end, 
the last line spoken by Edgar or Albany, depending on which text you, you follow, uh, we that are young shall never live so, see so much nor live so long. I think it is a summary, really, of perhaps what Shakespeare wants us to take away from the play, is that we must learn by the misfortunes of our elders and, and, and their, what they've been through and, and take it into our own lives. So the hero at the end is, is, is Edgar, who, likely, is thrown out by his family, discarded, unloved, goes on a journey of self-awareness, um, much of it to do with uh, wanting to help other people and, and, and not being totally self-regarding, which is perhaps Leah's biggest mm -hmm. sin. Uh, and so, even at the end of all this horror, it's going to be all right, perhaps, for the people who are left. Yeah. One of the other heroes at the end uh, is, is is Kent. I, uh, oh. He, I mean, Kent. You know, his heart begins to break when he's reunited. When he and Lear are, are reunited, when he's out of disguise, and then I always love that bit where. Albany has this rather daft idea that they should divide up the kingdom again and maybe, you know, Kent and Edgar should take it in turns to rule. You think, hey, Albany, hang on, dividing the kingdom, that wasn't a very good idea at the beginning of the play. I don't think it's a good idea at the end. And do you remember Kent just says, oh, uh, no, I don't think that's a good idea. He says, I have a journey, sir, soon to go. My master calls me, I must not say no. And you sense he knows his heart, perhaps he's already had a heart attack. He, it's almost as if he knows he's going to have another heart attack. He's just gracefully going to, to withdraw into death to make sure that Edgar I, I'm, I'm convinced it should be Edgar who takes over at the end. No, what, a, what an amazing man Kent is. When his master dies, um, his life seems to be over as well. But um, in the end, it's the survivors who, who, who draw our attention to it, and uh, particularly Edgar. But I, I agree with you. The, uh, the, you know, b b people often say Shakespeare's bleakest um, tragedy, but actually, there's so much love at the end. I always think of that line of Philip Larkin's: "What will survive of us is love." Yes. Well, probably Larkin knew this play very well. Had <laughs> that, that lesson from it. But the thing about one of the things about dementia, isn't it, and and and, and an old person who seems to be utterly changed, perhaps physically, as well as mentally, is the effect they have on, on the people who are with them. And in my experience, and, and those of friends, looking after someone who is incapable, who in the past has been the provider, is very, very, very distressing. But in the end, you say, well, that's life. Uh, and uh, you don't, when the old person dies, feel, oh, I too must now die. No, you must go on. Mm. It's not your turn yet. Uh, it's very humane. Mm. Always Shakespeare, isn't he? But I think that's a very, a very, very good point to, 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 to end on, that it's a play um, about dealing with old age, the effect on families and the community of these changes that come with retirement and then failing physical health, mental health and, and so on. But and, and I would put in a plea as an atheist to, to the notion that seems to me strongly in the play that in the end you can't depend on the gods mm. because uh, they're utterly unreliable. Yeah. It's old Albany again, he keeps invoking the gods and something else goes wrong, doesn't That's it? That's right, and I, I, just, I can't remember whether there's a line that Lear says, but I certainly felt it when I was playing it. Is by the end, uh, Lear has no faith in the gods whatsoever and doesn't refer to them, and, uh, which is a huge change for him because clearly at the beginning uh, he invokes the gods immediately that uh, and anyone uh, tries to cross him. And that goes. So it's uh, it's we are barefoot animals, and we have to get on with it, and we have to do it ourselves as best we can. <laughs>